today is Christmas. We have a Christmas here. We'll be back in Denver. And with this uh, second mass of Christmas, the mass of the dawn, the epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3. Dearly beloved, the goodness and kindness of God our Savior hath appeared, not by the works of justice which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the lab of regeneration and the renovation of the Holy Ghost, whom he hath poured forth upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we may be heirs according to hope of life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then the Gospel. Take that according to St. Luke, chapter 2. At that time the shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem, and let us see this word that is come to pass, which the Lord hath showed to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the infant lying in a manger. And seeing the understood of the word that had been spoken to them concerning this child, and all that heard wondered, and at those things, that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these words, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. That's for the words in today's Holy Gospel. Well, the two considerations of the second Mass of this sacred coming of Christ at Christmas. When our Lord was 33 years old, at that supper before he died, he spoke to uh, Judas, and he said, What thou must do, do quickly. And Judas hastily left the supper. And Judas hastily went to the high priest. And he, he went and gathered soldiers. And with haste he went to the garden of Gethsemane in order to betray the Son of Man with a kiss. What thou must do, do quickly. St. Augustine says that these things are true. That in general, when we do things for God, they are done slowly. They are done patiently. But when we do things for ourselves, and we do things for the devil, devil, it is great haste. However, come back 33 years before that day. When the Lord Jesus Christ is born in the night in a cave. A little by child is born. The angels are watching, or the shepherds rather, are watching their, their flocks. It's just another ordinary night. And what happens? Angels appear to them, and they hear them singing about the glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men who have good will. Not peace to all men, where all men shall not taste peace. Many men shall never know peace. But to those men that have good will, let them have peace. And then the angel tells the shepherds that over in Bethlehem, a little ways away, there is a cave, and in that cave there is a child. And that child is wrapped in swathing clothes, and the child is laid in a manger. And this child is the Messiah. And this child is the King of kings and Lord of lords they've been waiting for for the last 4,000 years. For 4,004 years they've been waiting for this child. And what does the Holy Scripture tell us about these shepherds? The angels disappeared, and the shepherds spoke to one another. And they said, let us go and let us see if what the angels said was true. Let us go and let us see about it. And they made haste. And they ran. And another time, when Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, there were two disciples, two apostles, St. John and St. Peter. And they did not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. 
They did not believe that there was a miracle. But the word came to them that the tomb was empty. And the word came to them that he had appeared to Mary Magdalene, which of course is crazy, impossible. But what happened? St. John tells us what happened. He says it was in their own hearts. They didn't speak one to another. Thirty-three years later, before that, the shepherds spoke. And they went with haste to see the child in the manger. And they went back rejoicing. Thirty-three years later, two other shepherds, shepherds of the New Testament, they don't even speak. They have heard the word that the tomb is empty. They, of course, don't believe. But they are driven by a force inside of them that makes them run. To a while our Lord did say to Judas, What thou must do, do quickly. And while it is true that many wicked things are done with haste, there is an urgency to good. There is an urgency to the presence of God. And those that make haste, they shall find him. And those that do not run to capture the prize. St. Paul said, run. Which means, make haste. But do not run in order to get exercise. Run that you may obtain the prize. Which means, run with the fullness of your heart. Run with the fullness of your being. And run with only one goal. And then you shall obtain the prize. And that first running happened. When 4,004 years, shepherds have waited. 4,004 years, saints have waited. They have waited so long, and now angels finally appear to shepherds and say, the child is there. They don't tell them to go to the child. The child is there. He's wrapped in swathing clothes. He's laid in the manger. And something comes to the heart of those shepherds, so they speak to one another. And what do they say? Let us go. Let us see if the word is spoken to us is true. Let us go and see the word. And with haste they ran. The first haste that must be made for those that want to survive a war, for those that want to go to heaven and be at peace and be happy, the first haste that must be made is the haste of running towards God. Where is he? He's there. Did the resurrection really happen? I must go and find out now. And they went and found out. And the holy apostles of the New Testament, they had a conversation with God inside of their hearts. The apostles of the Old Testament spoke out loud. St. John and St. Peter ran to the tomb and they saw that it was empty. And St. John began to believe and understood that Jesus Christ was really risen from the dead and they had truly conquered death. And he went off pondering in his heart. And St. Peter went pondering in his heart. What had happened to them? Jesus Christ came as a child. And we'll notice when he is a child, the shepherds come and they speak and they glorify him. The shepherds go and speak to the others about the presence of God, and they believe. But in a short time, their own children, their own boys, are going to be dying. They're going to experience sorrow and weeping, because their own children are going to be killed by Herod. Many of them will be discouraged, but their children will become saints. They don't know what's going to happen. But we come to the 33 years later. And these two shepherds come. And what do they do? The two shepherds that are St. John and St. Peter, they wander off. And the first one sees and believes. What will come out of his heart? The Gospel of St. John that flies above all and teaches us all about the divine nature of God made man. The divine nature inside of Jesus Christ. And he's just more than the others about his love. And he will write the book of Apocalypse. It will come from his mouth and from his heart. The history of the whole world. Because a shepherd pondered. There are many, many crises in the church today. And there are many reasons why we are on the path to hell.
But one of them is, shepherds do not make haste. And shepherds don't ponder. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is given for you to understand. But to the crowds I speak in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. It is given for the shepherd to understand. It is given for the shepherd to speak what is inside of his heart. But what is the trouble? The shepherd does not run to Jesus Christ. He doesn't run to where the child is. He doesn't notice the swaddling clothes. Isn't this a sign of the child? As a priest of God, what is to be expected in my life? To be wrapped in swaddling clothes, which is a bandage wrapped around a body like a, like a shroud around a dead body, so that my arms and feet cannot move. Tied on every side, we are expected to meet obstacles if we're going to run with haste to find Jesus Christ. We are expected to be laid in a manger, to be the food of others. We are expected to be in this world, but what's going to happen? See where God is. God is wrapped in swathing clothes. God is laid in a manger. And make haste to see it. Though the body is wrapped, though the arms are wrapped, though the feet is wrapped, there is one thing Satan can never wrap, and that is our tongues. When Jesus Christ was upon the cross, he spoke seven words in which are found all divine love and all truth and all the gospel. And these words transformed the world. When the thief was on the cross and was about to die, he spoke the truth. And the word that came from him comforted the heart of Jesus Christ. The word that came from him communicated the truth to a world that did not want to hear it at the foot of the cross. It gave comfort to the holy women and to St. John that at least this thief knows that he is innocent. And the word cannot be held back. The word cannot be held down. They will always try to hold down the followers of Jesus Christ. They will always try to hold down the prophets. But if they can tie their hands, they can tie the feet, they can imprison, they can do all manner of things. But God will not allow the tongue of truth to be tied. It shall be spoken in all ages, even in our age. But how is it supposed to be spoken? Who is supposed to speak it? There must be prophets. One of our great duties in the church today is to pray for priests. Who is this child that is born in the cave? Who is he that is seen? He is priest. Why can we see his body? What is priesthood? Priesthood happened when the divinity of God the Son suffused the entire body, every atom and molecule in the humanity of Jesus Christ. So that our humanity became priest. He became a priest according to the order of Melchizedek, who was a king of peace, who had neither beginning of days nor end of life, who offered the sacrifice of bread and wine, and who was there to celebrate before God the victory of Abraham over the wicked kings. And Abraham won. And the victory was celebrated by Melchizedek. And God said, there will come another priest. The priesthood of Aaron is holy, but it is temporary. The priesthood of Aaron is only for these times of the Old Testament, and it is a priesthood of death. But there will come a priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek. And this priesthood is the one who had neither beginning of days nor end of life. Now every man is beginning of days. Every man is end of life. I was born some time ago. I will die soon. But the priesthood that is in me has no beginning of days. It has no end of life. The truth that proceeds from the mouth has no beginning of days, has no end of life, and it cannot be held down. It cannot be stopped. And there must be haste. There's a war going on, and there must be haste. We must run to the tomb and see that Satan has been defeated. We must run to the cross, and there fight with Christ, and his Holy Mother on the cross, and we must run to the place where the child is born. And they ran. The shepherds left their sheep in order to see Christ, 
And the sheep were watched. The sheep were tended to, just like St. Isidore the farmer. St. Isidore, he would be distracted in watching his sheep. and He would be distracted in the working of his farm. And he would turn and pray at the, at the tabernacle. And he would kneel and pray in the presence of God. And angels came and plowed the field for him. And we must understand that in our supernatural battle, the priest of God, the prophets whom God wants to come at this time, the true apostles of Jesus and Mary, this is the time. But St. Louis the Montfort spoke about, there must be apostles of Jesus and Mary. There must be young men to come to be these apostles, to be the mouthpiece of our Lord Jesus Christ in our times. It is now time. We must run with haste to where the child is. Run with haste to where he dies, and run with haste to the tomb. And then coming back, there shall be glory. Coming back, there shall be great peace. And coming back, we'll be able to speak the words like St. Peter did. When 53 days after that crucifixion, when 50 days after that resurrection, filled with pondering, after being nine days in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he stood up and he spoke. He spoke. That first sermon that converted more souls to God than any sermon spoken by God made man himself. He gave that power to Peter. And Peter went and spoke. And 3,000 were baptized and our holy church was born. And the next day he spoke. And 2,000 were baptized. And our church began to grow. And it shall never die and God is in it, but God has chosen that he wishes to be spoken about. He wishes to be loved. He wishes to be known and expressed and communicated to in our world inside of human hearts, inside of human bodies that move with haste, with urgency. And the shepherds move with haste, and they ran to the place where Christ was born. And they saw the child was wrapped in swathing clothes, and they saw that he was laid in a manger. And they wondered at these things. And they went out and told the people that God made man is here. That the Messiah has come. The King of Kings is here. And he has chosen to be born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. And they had to go to that house of bread. They had to hear the angels. The Blessed Virgin Mary did not hear the angels. St. Joseph did not hear the angels. How do they know about the singing of the angels? Because the shepherds told them, there is singing that is meant for this world, and there is singing that is meant for heaven. And God has intended that the priests of the church hear this singing. This is one reason why in our holy church, the monks spend their times in the churches singing. They sing what they have heard. They sing the Holy Gregorian chant. They sing inside the monasteries. The nuns sing also. And this singing is cry is a voice of heaven being re-communicated to this earth. There must be haste to find God in our hearts, to grow in divine love and divine knowledge. And then when the war comes, we need not fear. We will know what to do. And we will be given strength to do that which is right. Christ comes in grace. But he comes to those that want him, those that hear the words of the angels and run with haste. Let us run with haste to find the Lord Jesus Christ and to stay next to him. Be always next to him. And we wish you all a happy and holy Christmas. And God bless you all then. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.